Uh, next, we have Xinling from um, Protocol Labs. Uh, she's a product manager at Protocol Labs who is responsible for also for client growth. But the analytics approach that she's taking is a bit different. Uh, she uses uh, NLP models to analyze the answers to uh, Falcon Plus application that were uh, provided in the large data cap applications. Um, we are uh, so. She, she wants to offer an uh, easier onboard, board, uh, onboarding process for all clients. Uh, let's welcome Xilin. Wow, such a warm, warm house. Yeah, thanks everyone. Hi, I'm Xilin. So I work on Joel's team uh, as a product manager uh, for client growth. And today I really want to share I think a few speakers already touch touch on that. Like, how do we uh, merge on-chain and off-chain data? And one of the key challenge is uh, most of the off-chain data exists in GitHub, and right now a lot of those uh, GitHub data is in uh, free text form. So it's pretty hard to extract meaningful uh, information without uh, additional, you know language processing, so eventually uh, the project I was working on was to revamp the data cap application. So essentially we can provide, we can standardize the answer and we can provide much higher uh, quality uh, data insight so we can achieve our goal to make the uh, data merge uh, much better and eventually lead to much better uh, decision making. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first, uh, the mission of uh, briefly touch on mission of client growth team. Uh, we want to develop tools, improve processes, and work with large data clients to onboard gigabyte scale data. Uh, and as Joao previous showed, all the amazing progress uh, we have been um, on, we have been onboarded uh, gigabytes data, and we even have gigabytes data uh, goal to achieve next year. But um, how do we do that? then we need first solve the data cap application uh, process issue. So as you can see here, uh, there are multiple uh, personas involved in this ecosystem, uh, including notary client storage provider and also uh, the community governance. So essentially, um, as a client, you need to have a, a certain amount of data cap in order to uh, deploy the data cap to store your data. So the process is very similar like when you apply mortgage, right? You need, to, uh, you need some, um, some people to validate either your credit score or your credibility so you can get a certain amount of loan. And same thing here, uh, each client, if you want to get data, your data on board it on, um, on our network, particularly large amounts, you need to show your credibility. And right now, the way to show your credibility is to uh, apply data cap, uh, which is on GitHub. And the current process is like this. So as I imagine, I'm a client. Like, I, I have to fill out uh, you know, uh, a GitHub markdown form, format with uh, 16 questions. And if I'm not very technical, I might run into some issue, right? I might have formatting issue or I give up. So uh, so that's why we need a <laughs> that's why we need a major revamp. And that's why like I'm here to talk about this. <laughs> so okay, now it looks painful, right? Let's break it down. How why it is painful, right? So the problem is first, definitely poor UX experience for data cap applicants, right? If you're not technical, it might be a nightmare. Second, even you are technical, you happen to manage to apply the GitHub application and you fill out the markdown format, it's still painful to validate for notary and governance team because uh, it's free text. That means you can uh, enter anything you want. And that actually increases, like, kind of go back and forth between uh, the client and notary team because they might not really understand what the three paragraphs mean, right? So, and lastly, it also limited our opportunity to really understand who the clients are, who the use cases are, or what the use cases, and what's their storage uh, like preference. Because we we asked them 16 questions, <laughs> that 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 is actually rich insight if we can extract them. So given those challenges, um, but it doesn't mean we can we, we cannot do anything, right? We can still do like tax analysis analytics uh, using some models. And I'm grateful for the latest development of you know those uh, AI model, AI understanding model, including like the GPT-3 developed by OpenAI. So uh, you can actually, you know, uh, first uh, just to test the 
uh, kind of the accuracy of the model, you can throw, you know, for example, one application and see how accurate uh, the they can answer, and you can fine tune your prompt uh, to eventually get to uh, like a, a standardized answer that fit into the category. Yeah, the uh, process is def definitely not fun, but it's much better than review every single line manually. So that's uh, that's that's the methodology here. And now, like as you can imagine, we probably like after these processes. And uh, now we can synthesize some uh, some some data, uh, get some insights here, and uh, eventually we want to deploy a form that with drop down with standardized answer, and also give people ex exception right. For example, if your answer did not fit in fail into these categories, like um, you can write like write write your like uh, exact answer. So later, like notary can still have the rich information. They don't lose any rich information that 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 they can use to validate uh, the client. And the possible impact is first delight the community, right? Like we know that GitHub is not the idea like uh, eventual the ideal solution, but in this transition period, we still want to make the application form as easier as to use, so it did not become a blocker for the client. And also, we reduce the back and forth for the notary and the governance team. And lastly, uh, we, uh, in, um, it, it will also help Filecoin uh, network to uh, uh, get those useful insights to improve our product and processes. So we can actually make the network uh, even better. We will collect more information about like what tool, or what processes we can specifically improve by adding those uh, useful insights as well. And um, yeah, so like just double double click on the methodology, like text analytics, uh, and then like do inside synthesis and review proposal internally. But what's like even better about like Web3 project and in general Web3 is you also need to review your proposal externally. Like GitHub is an open forum, so all those proposals are. Like you know, like all, all those new proposal will actually be reviewed by the uh, uh, by the uh, GitHub community, by by your community as well. And this is the the part that are kind of transition uh, that are missing in the traditional industry. So we really uh, leverage uh, the community help and also offer the transparency for the community as well. And next, uh, just briefly show some insight that I extracted after uh, those processes. For example, for the question like, how long do you plan to keep uh, keep this data on Filecoin? As you can see, that from 600 uh, over 600 applications, almost half of them like their answer is related to like permanent forever, and like followed by. Um, Followed by like 14% uh, around like two years to five years, um, so that actually indicates uh, a lot of clients who are pursuing Filecoin, they want to store, uh, they want permanent storage. So we definitely have a product market fit in terms of permanent storage, and as a uh, combined insight, what's the extracted retrieval frequency? Um, the answer is uh, again more than half. They, they, they answer is really to ne <laughs> never, never, or like a yearly basis. Um, but again, it that actually I think it it indicated like current product market fit, but also indicated the opportunities here, right? Uh, like to previous, I think ZX you asked the question, what, like what's the what's what, what's the kind of the impact we are driving, right? If, what's the Real value of the data if they they don't want to be retrieved, right? So that actually give us insight that okay, if right now naturally only 13% of users they are thinking about weekly retrieval, daily retrieval. Why is that, right? Is it more like uh, the limitation of uh, how Filecoin position themselves, uh, or the limitation of the uh, like the suite of product we uh, the capability of Filecoin? Uh, so that's our question. Uh, we need to figure out, and also like um, right now, more than eighty percent of applicants they apply for public data storage. So uh, in the GitHub, we intentionally ask the ask user like, uh, can you guarantee or can you confirm you can reach uh, reach the data can be retrievable by anyone on the network? And more than eighty percent people say said yes. However, from the previous 
previous slide, you saw that you know half people they don't want their data to be retrieved. So that's that's why like when you have like kind of um, that indicated like sometimes when you ask your client what you what do you want, when you ask your customer what do you want, maybe they don't really really know what they want, and that. That, that is uh, why, like as a product, as a network, we need to have better value prop to educate our user, or, like what's the suitable use cases for you. But based on uh, the uh, the feedback, the answers, like 80% uh, of them, they they are they they believe you know this is public data, this can be retrieved, and beyond that, there are some uh, uh, the the top five use cases are like be beyond like uh, public data archive. They also have like some uh, very interesting video storage like um, mark like online education uh, videos and also internet of uh, uh, IoT related data. So yeah, given that you know. All those insights, um, uh, I, I wrote out like a proposal on the GitHub. Essentially, that kind of recap everything we just talked about with like proposed the solution, like uh, the, with the, the supporting evidence, and that's the that's the great part of uh, Web3, right? Like you write a proposal on GitHub, you directly get an uh, input from your community. Um, so you know, like some. You might get like people who are confused by this proposal. Then you can kind of you know uh, discuss back and forth. But also you might get appreciation from the community. That I, I believe that's the way we should op operate. Like be open and transparent. So now this proposal got actually got reviewed in um, uh, like a couple of days ago in the governance call, and uh, we are ready to go. So essentially that's the solution. Right before that is uh, you know you can write anything. After that. Uh, it have clear like uh, a breakdown of the question, right? In which geo do you plan to make storage deal? Just pick the uh, ideal location. You can select multiple. And how will you distribute your data to storage provider? It also offer drop down like are you using S3 or you are using like hard drive? So it will also uh, to my previous point. Uh, as an organization, as a, like a, the, in the file, Filecoin network, you also want to educate your client, right? Because maybe the client don't don't know; they just answer whatever they believe is right. But when you have an anchor, then um, you can actually collect uh, way more information, uh, and you can also educate them at the same time. Um, yeah. So essentially, I I believe that's the the impact for this is just a very I can small example, but. I believe that's always kind of how the impact of better insight lead to better decision. The input is, I, I would say like input is not just better insight, but better data. Better data and lead to better decision and eventually lead to a trusted community. So yeah, and that's pretty much the question. Oh uh, yeah, all the slides. Thank you for hello hello it's okay yeah thank you for the presentation uh, and you have survey result mm -hmm. and there's uh, more than 43 percent people say they want to store data forever and uh, why more than 30 percent people say it's will never retrieved <laughs> yeah <laughs> so because that, I think that's that's why we also need to like frame the question a little bit, right? When people think about how long do you plan to keep the data set, that means how long you, you will like store your data, right? But retrieval frequency is a different thing. They, they might like think, you know, yeah, you can you can still store your data, but also retrieve in the, in the same time. And Does they say never, sense? never. If they're storing, if they have a cold storage somewhere else. Yes. Okay. So come answer yeah. your question. <laughs> no. um, the, uh, the use case for that could be that they have another form of storage where they're keeping stuff that's hotter, and this is like their very, very distant backup, and they only need they, they're, if everything else works, then they'll never retrieve this data, but they may need to retrieve it. Yeah. And you collect mm. more than five hundred clients 
six six hundred over six hundred like application yeah, globally distributed. Yeah, it doesn't mean like you know it's distinct application because some clients they might apply multiple. So you know it might and I think the distinct client is like like less than uh, five hundred. Yeah. Thank you. One more question. I guess the thirty-one percent of people never wanting to retrieve data makes yeah. me sort of look at okay, what is this respondent group? Because it seems not super useful if it, if we never get it back, if I can never get it back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so but but like thinking about how do we find where we're going and mm -hmm. like the the people who haven't shown up yet versus like how do you correct for that well I guess I guess is sort of like the yeah that's a great question the unknown yeah. demographic that isn't responding yet yeah that's a great question so um to uh reframe the question are you are you saying like this is kind of the current product market fit but how do we go to the desired product market fit which is you know essentially over 90 percent people want want to have their data back right yeah um yeah, I think that that kind of go back to how we position our solution at the beginning, right? I think um, we always we cannot position ourselves using the current like evidence. Hey, we got like clients, you know, in the university ac academia or, like industry, you know, they they are like uh, they are all public data and they are looking for like eight to ten years storage because you know they are previous like uh, their storage option might be on tape or they, they want like 20 years storage solution, right? Or we have some clients in the cold storage space. That actually, you know, that, that actually is kind of historic how we position ourselves. But right now with like the um, FVM and like, you know, uh, computing and all those exciting things that not just on the roadmap, but actually in ha like active development, I think it's the time for us to really think about, you know, how do we add this excitement stuff and uh, actually position ourselves that okay, we can uh, we we can retrieve with you know those technology at hand in the shortcoming months or period, um, but then like I, I, the the trade off is okay, how do you have that balance right? Because you always you also don't want to over promise your client. So I think that's uh, the balance we need to find here. Yeah, hope it answer your question. <laughs> Just, it's more of an add-on than a question. I think uh, just, just this. Um, if you consider abuse, which we know exists, we also see clients just like copying application templates. And then sometimes, so I also wouldn't want us to over-index on this particular metric because retrievability is like, there's no necessarily points given or like a, a lot of questioning happens. Like there's never been a case, at least that I've known, where a notary has said, oh, I won't give you data cap because you have, because your data is, you know, you'll never retrieve it. It's just like a part we ask. And so I think, so there are two parts to that. One is of course the new flow will help us get more accurate data. Um, and the second is we can think about incentivizing, um, you know, clients to store, like to store data that they want to retrieve through potentially, you know, in, like maybe introducing a new QAP or, um, other incentives in the network. So I think those are two points to keep in mind as we are thinking about this number. I just want to add a little point to retrievals as well. Um, over the past few days, our team, oh, I, I'm Kara, I work on the data programs team. My team has been in some conversations with a lot of uh, the people in the ecosystem about how do we incentivize retrievals, right? And some of the points that we brought up are Maybe the point is, the incentive would be if you cannot provide other reliable retrievals, we will not give you more data cap or we will not give you uh, more deals in the future. And that's one way to like, not like penalize, but kind of relatively penalize them for not providing retrievals in, in the future.
great point. So <laughs> I also feel like I'm educating my, my, myself, you know, in, in this process. Yeah, I have been PL like for two, two months and I saw, you know, a lot of exciting development, but also I, I, I think this is more than just, you know, building the technology protocol, right? But also incentive layer is super important because it's not, uh, eventually it's not centralized. We don't have a centralized, you know, govern, governance policy, policy right? It, a lot of things, a lot of actions need to be like incentivized when there is no centralized governance. It's all powered by community. And if you don't offer the right incentive to the right in intent, then the result not gonna be uh, great. So that's also something I think the people in this room could like think about like how do we design those incentives beyond technology, yeah. Cool. If there is no more question, yeah. yeah. I could do one, but I'm aware of talking too much. Um, I'm really interested in the GPT clustering that you did mm -hmm. on the on the on the existing corpus of data. Did it because you know, yeah, clustering exercises are really important. Did it throw up any things that really surprised you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So first, you know, you need to test your 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 prompt, right? And then, like, I I noticed like, even you just change a single word, you know, the result come back. I'm super different. So I almost feel like, you know, in this, in this uh, like AI world, we, we eventually probably will have a new profession like called prompt engineer because, because that, that, that actually impact the accuracy of your model, like in the way how you interpret the question, how you ask the question. And I mean, that's, that's I spend the majority of time to just fine tune the, the prompt. And I think it's very interesting because when you think about like, uh, for example, what data scientists the pre previously heavily, they spend a lot of time, 80, probably 80% 80 of time on like data cleansing, right? But, but now, okay, imagine if you just spend 80% time on prompt tuning, it's a huge like productivity improve to <laughs> offload. I saw a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so, I w yeah. Yeah, so I would say like for this one, given the data size is pretty small, right, like 600, I, I, I can add like a buffer, you know, kind of, uh, 90% accuracy, so I think, at least in this case, I didn't run into the overfitting. But to a point, if you have like massive data, right, eventually well, it might run into the same question, or same problems, like the overfitting we currently have to deal with. Yeah, so I, I guess my answer is, I'm still learning, I would like to, <laughs> yeah, continuously learn about this area, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.